The following presentation was recorded at the 2014 Southeast Linux Fest in Charlotte, North Carolina. It is licensed under a Creative Commons license. For more information, visit www.southeastlinuxfest.org. The Southeast Linux Fest would like to thank the following diamond sponsors in 2014 for helping make these videos possible. Let's get started. So this talk is about max scale. Does anyone here know what max scale is? That's good. That's, that's, a, that's a good start. Well, then you're at the right place because I'm going to explain what it is. Uh, so first of all, a few words about me. So my name is Max. Uh, our marketing team likes this picture. I actually don't. Now you know who runs the show, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I used to work for a com place called MySQL AB uh, back in the days when Peter was also working there. Before Peter, actually, but that's besides the point. And uh, and I work for SkySQL slash MariaDB. And uh, yeah, I've been doing this for quite a while, actually. Too long, probably. But yeah. Uh, and at what they do at SkySQL, so I run our services organization, consulting, training, remote DBA, and I also do stuff like this, so I talk at, at conferences. And I'm originally from Finland, where MySQL kind of was created. The company wasn't, the company was in Sweden, but the founder was from Finland. And uh, same with MariaDB and SkySQL. All right. So the topic of today is, is max scale. Um, so what is max scale? It's, uh, uh, it's a, quer uh, uh, a query routing layer, basically uh, a proxy. We call it an intelligent proxy because it's a bit more intelligent than your average proxy server, uh, meaning that you can do more things that a normal proxy can't do. And in particular, because this is a proxy that's very specific to MySQL or or MariaDB, um, which you know has pros and cons. The pros being that we can do a lot of things that most proxies can't do because we're we're uh, uh, focusing on, on a specific uh, type of traffic. However, of course, you can't use this proxy for much else than MySQL queries, at least at the moment. Uh, it's completely open source. Uh, it's on GitHub. The address is over there. Uh, it's currently in alpha. We've been working on this for uh, a couple of years. I actually don't know the, I don't remember how long, but quite a while. It's currently in alpha, but we're actually getting to something called, called a beta uh, soon, uh, most likely next month in July. And we're actually looking for, for beta testers. So if someone is interested in actually trying this out uh, in a sem semi-production, we would be very interested to, to find out. The current version is, is called 0 0.7, which is the one I'm going to, well, I'm going to try to do a demo, but it's running on Amazon, so I need the network to work, which hasn't always been the case here, so we'll see about the demo. Um, right. And, you know, beta this summer, we're, we're planning to hopefully have a GA uh, sometime this fall, but it, it, of course, depends on how the beta goes and, and so forth. Um, so what are the benefits of max scale, uh, especially if you, if you think about other proxies? So there's a few things max scale as well. Uh, I said that max scale is, is made for MySQL and MariaDB, which means that it can do a few things that most other proxies can't. For example, authentication layer. So max scale has an authentication layer, uh, which means that the queries don't have to go all the way to the MySQL server for authentication. You can do it already at the proxy level. And this, of course, most proxies can't do because they don't have a MySQL user authentication built into them, which MaxScale does. Uh, uh, it has a flexi flexible architecture, so it's extendable. Uh, we'll look at the architecture in a moment, so you'll see what I mean by that. Uh, of course, as a proxy, it ha it's transparent, so you can have a complex HA architecture behind the proxy, and the client applications don't know. They just connect to... to max scale and they don't have to worry about failures, they don't have to worry about if your architecture changes, you add slaves, you remove slaves, you completely change your architecture, it's all hidden behind the max scale proxy. 
and you can also do scaling with max scale in theory uh, because you can partition the load so you can read scaling out of the box uh, you could develop max scale to have some kind of sharding functionality but there is no sharding functionality at the moment at max scale uh, only read read scaling uh, you can also do some filtering and logging capability at max scale uh, the basics, uh, basics of this was added in the most recent version, 0 0.7, so it's fairly new. Uh, but, so there's like three different modules for doing that, but, but you can do quite a lot already with these, and you can extend this further as well. So, MaxScales is a proxy layer, meaning that your clients connect to MaxScale, and MaxScale is then connected to your underlying servers. Now, in a sense, this could be a single point of failure, if you think from an HA perspective, but you can of course have multiple max scale proxies attached to the same cluster. And you can have a hierarchy of max scale servers if you wanted to as well. You can have a max scale server connected to a max scale servers and so forth. But whatever you do, you always have, you need to have some kind of uh, redundancy, not only behind at the database, but also in the front end or on the client level to be able to connect Max scale twice. itself doesn't do failover, right? What? Failover doesn't. Uh, MaxScale itself does not handle failover uh, of the databases. No. So MaxScale is, is a proxy, it does a lot of things, but the failover will be, ha will be handled uh, by the databases. So it will, uh, MaxScale will detect uh, failures, it will detect master slave relationships and things like that, but it won't actually, at least not at the moment, it does not do any kind of automation for that. So if you use MaxScale with replica replication, you would need MHA or, or, or PRM or something to, to do the failover behind the scenes. Of course, if you use something like Galera where you don't really need failover, it works out of the box because it's built into Galera, the failover layer. But would it know, let's say, if you run that over Galera, would it know not to send the queries to a failed node or would they need to run a DPHA proxy? It will know not to send queries to failed nodes, yes. Oh. <laughs> so here, the question was whether. Uh, for a Galera cluster, whether if a node fails, whether MaxScale will know not to send queries to a failed node, and the answer is yes. MaxScale has a monitoring uh, uh, module that will make, uh, connect to the, to the nodes and see if they're up or not. So MaxScale does monitoring. It, doesn't, it just doesn't do failover itself. Um, so if you look at the architecture of MaxScale, so uh, this is kind of... Uh, I guess the beauty of MaxScale, uh, Peter talked about not over-engineering and in a sense MaxScale might be a bit over-engineered because uh, it is, uh, the idea is, is very extendable so you can extend MaxScale to do lots of things uh, and it's built in a very modular fashion. So there's a MaxScale core which is basically a message switch using a Linux ePAL so it basically sw sends messages between these different modules. That's basically the core of MaxScale. And then uh, the modules are five different categories and you can have multiple uh, uh, instances, I guess, or, or modules running off each category. So, for example, you could in theory have multiple routing, or you can have multiple routers running in the same MaxScale instance. You could have multiple protocols and, and so forth. So it's a very flexible architecture in itself. Uh, and the modules inside here can be client facing, they can be uh, backend facing, it can be internal, it could in theory connect to anything uh, in theory. So far we are the only ones who have been coding modules but in theory because it's open source you could, you could create your own modules so if you wanted to have add a protocol to max scale because there is an API for it you could do so. So it's a very flexible architecture, same with the monitor or, or a router. Okay, so let's look at each of these pieces a bit. What, what, do, what do they mean? Uh, so the first thing is the protocol, and that defines uh, how the applications connect to MaxScale. Uh, well, in the initial release of MaxScale, there is only one protocol, and that's the MySQL protocol. So you can connect uh, uh, using a Max scale, uh, MySQL connection, and that's about it. But because there is a protocol mo module, you can add later on different modules which we have on our roadmap to do but it could be done by someone else as well. So basically 
it looks like using this protocol, you can connect to max scale and it looks like a MySQL server because it, it reads the MySQL protocol. So any, My, any MySQL client can connect to max scale. Uh, and there's also a backend protocol which defines how max scale connects to the servers. Again, at the moment there's only one, which is MySQL MariaDB, but in theory you could connect it to other database servers as well uh, using the, using a by creating a protocol module. Uh, so, and then if you finish through that MySQL protocol, right, uh, uh, the, what about the SSL and prepared statements? Are they both powered? Uh, SSL and prepared statements, I don't, uh, prepared statements, that's a good question. I don't think we support SSL at the moment, but I actually don't know. And prepared statements, I think we support prepared statements. Well, I'm not 100% sure, but pretty sure that we support the prepared statement. Uh, they're stored in the max scale level, the prepared statements. Same like user-defined variables and things like that. We support them as well. Max scale stores them and then uh, sends them to the actual server. So each server, if you use a user-defined variable, you create one. Max scale will actually make sure that every server has the same. So if you then a query gets rerouted to another server, they will actually get the same value. If somebody were to add a protocol for, let's say, a SQL server or mm -hmm. I mean, technically you could, yeah, and, and sorry, yeah, the question, so the question was, if someone would create a module for connecting to Oracle or, or SQL Server or some other database, could you then somehow use this to connect both? And, and the answer is yes, and how, exactly how it depends on how you want to do it. So you can, uh, uh, we'll talk about filters in a moment, but there's routing and there's filter routing depend, uh, decides how, how the query gets routed to servers, so you could use that, and then filters you can actually Mod, uh, change a query coming in and change where it connects. You can actually connect to both. So you get a filter, you get a query going to either or, and you can say, okay, this should actually go to both. So the right will go to both or, or something like that. So you could definitely do it, yes. But there's, and there's multiple ways of doing it. Uh, right, so those protocols. Uh, uh, then we have the routing, which is uh, uh, very important for, for scaling and for HA. So that basically uh, defines the rules for how to route queries to the actual servers, so the database servers behind. Uh, we currently have, so when you download MaxScale, there's currently two routers available. Uh, there's a connection-based routing and a read-write splitter route, 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 routing. So the connection-based routing will basically uh, uh, establish a route when you connect. So you will be connected to a server, and then as long as your connection is open, you will use the same connection all the time. So you'll always go to the same server. And if you use statement-based routing, then you can dynamically change which server it goes to, and we have a read-write split router available, basically, uh, which will then, depending on what kind of query it gets, it will change where it routes the query. So all, in a master-slave environment, all writes will go to the master, and slaves will go, uh, slave, reads will go to the slaves uh, in a load-balanced way. And this, this, is all, this exists now in, in, in MaxScale. There's, of course, things to consider, like if you use uh, uh, multi, statement transactions, of course, the read-write splitting won't work. If, if you have multi-statement transactions, it automatically goes to the master. So you basically, the read-write splitting doesn't work anymore uh, if you do that. So there are certain caveats for using a read-write splitter. Um, but for example, if you already, uh, if your application is already built for replication, you might already do read-write splitting at the application layer. You might have separate functions for writing and reading queries, in which case, you can use connection-based routing because the application would automatically uh, know whether, whether the connection should go to the master or to the slave, and then you can let max scale just load balance it on the slaves for the reads or something like that. Uh, right. Uh, then there's the filters and the loggings. 
uh, and that's the last of the of the kind of modules where we did some work. So before the la latest version of Maxil, there was nothing there. Uh, in theory, you can do a lots of a lots of cool things with filter and logging. You could uh, well, you can log stuff because every query goes through Maxil, so you can basically log based on rules, based on anything. You can do whatever you want with the queries. Uh, you could also use this as a firewall. Firewall, you could have a blacklist of queries. Say some certain queries just doesn't go through, or certain queries goes to certain servers. You can make rules, rules based on the query contents on where the queries are sent. Uh, you could have rules that uh, some queries always go to the master. Some queries, well, never go anywhere. They get an error. Some queries do something. Uh, you can filter the queries. You can trans do query transformation. Uh, for various reasons, uh, uh, well, you can think of a lot of things you can do. You can have, you can, using filters, you can create parallel streams. So you have a query coming in, and you, it's a, it's a certain type of query. You say, well, this should actually go to two different locations. So you actually create another uh, backend stream. So you send it to two databases or four or whatever. So you can do very very complex things with these filters. Uh, at the moment, you can only do transformations on. On request, there's nothing on the there's nothing you can't there's no there's no hooks for doing it on re data return, but it's actually it's on the roadmap for the next version actually, so it should be there already in the beta. So with the uh, with the filtering and the parallel streams concept, if you've got your data like sharded out and for whatever reason you need to say pull in from both sides of the you know from both pieces yeah. from two pieces, you could potentially maybe rewrite a query to pull in from both sides. Uh, yeah, so you could basically with this you could uh, you could do sharding in MaxScale, but there's no built-in functionality. But you would have to build it, yes. But you using a filter, you could do automatic sharding with MaxScale. Yes, we just haven't done it, anything about it yet. Uh, you would you would get two different data sets though, there's, because there's no there's no filter on the data uh, return data yet. Sure. But that should be in the beta, which should be out in a month. So. After that, you could really do the sharding. You send one, you get one query. It's split into two, and there's, well, you get one result at bat, back. So it looks like it's all in the same place for the client. So currently, we have we have these filters available. So we have a simple statement counting filter. So it counts the, the number of statements in a session. Uh, perhaps not very useful, but it's there. There's a query logging filter, so you can. Uh, log everything that happens in a session into a log file. And there's a query rewrite filter. Uh, using regular expressions, you can rewrite queries. Uh, and these are the filters that are there out of the box. Uh, and of course, so, so these, they allow you, you, you're allowed to create filters based on these uh, uh, modules. So you can, of course, the regular expression can be any, you can have multiple, and so forth. Uh, right. And I, I, when I show my demo, I actually have uh, I have a few examples of doing query, doing a query rewrite filter example, which is the easiest to see to see a result in. Uh, but as I said, we're planning more, and we, especially the data return set transformations are coming. Then the authentication. I mean, this is a a, a module in Max scale. Again, we currently only support one type of authentication, which is the same as in MySQL MariaDB. Uh, the way it works in MaxScale is that uh, the user accounts are loaded on startup. So when MaxScale starts up, it assumes that all servers have the same user accounts. If for some reason this is not the case, well, uh, currently MaxScale is, is set to work with, with the same one set of user accounts for, for all the servers in the cluster. Uh, so it basically loads, when MaxScale starts, it loads the user accounts into MaxScale. Um, and every time you, send, you connect and send a query, the user gets authenticated at max scale, and then the query gets sent to the, to the underlying server. If for some reason the authentication uh, uh, works in max scale but fails on the server level, then max scale will refresh the user account. Support in terms of plugins, or is it only a 
uh, there's only the built-in at the moment. You can't, you can't add up. So the question was whether, whether you can uh, uh, use authentication plugins in MaxScale, and the answer is no, not at the moment. It's only the built-in user accounts for My MySQL and, and MariaDB. So you would have to uh, change, or you would have to add an authentication module that does that to write C code, basically, to do it. Um, then we have another important piece of the puzzle is the monitors. Uh, and what do the monitors do? Well, they monitor the underlying servers. So they are the ones that uh, make sure that MaxScale gets uh, an up-to-date picture of, of the servers, uh, underlying servers. Uh, and of course, this is the information the, the routers, router modules use in order to, to route the queries to the correct uh, uh, database servers. We currently have two modules for monitoring. One uh, for doing standard MySQL and MariaDB monitoring, and well, in, it includes replication sta status. Uh, and then there's a Galera cluster node monitoring. And the, the Galera cluster node monitoring is aware of the states of Galera cluster nodes. So who here has used the Galera cluster? Two guys. So in a Galera cluster, you might have a MySQL server that's running, but it's not in a synchronized state. And of course, you don't want to access that server. And this monitor is, is of course, aware of that. So it checks the, the Galera state of your nodes, not only that the MySQL server. So typically, if you use uh, a normal, let's say, a random uh, uh, proxy out of the box, it will just, just uh, test that the service is running, not that it's actually synchronized. So it wouldn't work with Galera. Uh, but this does, because it actually checks the state of Galera. Make sure that the Galera nodes is synchronized. If the Galera node is not synchronized, it won't be used for any query routing. Uh, and uh, the standard MySQL MariaDB monitor, so it, it, it monitors that the server is up and the status of, of the replication. So for example, if your replication would stop, uh, it wouldn't route queries to that server anymore. So if it's a slave, the slave stops. Uh, the router won't route queries to the slave anymore because it's no longer there. Uh, it, 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 monitor, it monitors replication lag. Actually, I think the 0 0.7 release already does this, so this actually is wrong, the text there. But, uh, and you can actually use this as a rule. In, that's coming in the beta version, that you could use uh, replication lag as a rule whether to, to use uh, to include a slave or uh, write queries to a slave or not, depending on how, how much it lags. There is no table consistency checks or anything like that, but you can still use replication lag to some extent to see if, it, uh, if a slave should be included or not. So you say uh, right now it's uh, it is freezing is just uh, sends very, very queries to the, uh, to the slave, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. What was the question? I mean. Oh, okay. So uh, I mean, you mentioned it doesn't uh, support verification, verification lock, right? Because if you look at the at the clean read, like right, written is what when you do a write, you you supposed to read the slave only when that query was propagated out there, right? Which you can uh, you can figure out by using the coordinates, but you're not doing that at this point, right? Yeah. So so the question was whether we, if you do, an, if you do a, a write on a master, if we validate this write has propagated to the slave before we read from that slave. And the answer is no, we don't do that yet. And that's something, I mean, that's something that will come in a later version as well, but it's not there yet. It's very easy to do with GTIDs, yes, with, with some of the. Uh, so let's look at some use cases with the current functionality. So one is, is Simple read scalability. The easy, easiest solution is, of course, if, if you're, as I mentioned, if uh, your applications are uh, replication aware, so they already have different functions for reading and writing, uh, which is the case already with some applications. In that case, this means that every client, on every client, you have two functions one for writing to MySQL, one for reading from MySQL. Uh, you can, instead of sending those to, directly to the master or slaves, you send them to MaxScale, and MaxScale will then send all writes to the master, 
and load, load balance all the reads to all the slaves. And this is fairly easy. So you would have two different connections. Basically, in Maxca, what you would have is you would have two different listeners uh, on different ports. One would be for the reads, one would be for the writes. And it is fairly easy. And this is used, of course, using collect connection load balancing. So uh, once you open a connection, it will go to the same machine, all queries in that connection. Um, if you use the read writes uh, a split router, you can use that as well. Um, it's already there. So now the application only needs one connection. Instead of connection connecting to a MySQL server, it connects to MaxScale. And uh, using the read write splitter router, the MaxScale will, for each query, decide whether it has to go to the master or to the slave. So MaxScale will have two connections open, one for the master and one for a slave. And depending on what query you get, it will intelligently decide where it goes. And as I said, this works well if you use, if you use well, you have to use, uh, 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 with, you have to have auto, be in auto commit mode, use single uh, operation transactions, but also things like store procedures, we don't yet, or we, I don't know if we ever will, but at the moment there's no logic in, in trying to see whether the store procedure is actually changing data. All store procedure calls will go to the master by default, and things like that. Uh, User-defined variables, I already mentioned, mentioned that, so we do deal with it. If, if you set a user-defined variable, MaxScale will actually set this user-defined variable on all the servers in, in, in this uh, cluster so that you could actually use this. If you do a read later on, you will actually read the same, same value as you re would read on the master. So those two cases work with replication. If you use uh, a Galera cluster, um, <clears throat> there's also two pot possibilities. One is uh, using connection-based routing. Um, of course, um, for those of you who don't know Galera, so in Galera, uh, basically all nodes are synchronized. So when you commit a transaction, the transaction uh, will, will be, you do all operations on one node, and as you commit a transaction, the, con the transaction will be validated by all nodes in the cluster, which basically means that uh, all nodes in the cluster will always be in the same state. Uh, so it doesn't matter where you write and it doesn't matter where you read, you will always see the same data. Of course, uh, the one uh, uh, difference from this is, is when you're within a transaction, you of course see the results of that transaction, but that's the same already also with one node. Uh, that makes it very easy for the routing because basically you can use connection-based routing. It doesn't matter where they read, where they write. You connect to MaxScale, MaxScale will give a connection to one of the Galera nodes, and you will use that Galera node. Uh, now, there is a potential slight problem with using Galera in this way. Uh, the way Galera does it is that it doesn't uh, uh, communicate. Galera nodes don't communicate until you commit, right? which is very good because it means that there's not a lot of network traffic, you're not bound by network latency is not a huge problem because you only have to do one uh, uh, communication across the nodes at commit. The potential problem with this is that if you do uh, use the same rows all the time, you update the same rows all the time for some reason, this means you can actually have conflict. So you can be updating a row in this node and in this node, and you won't know that until you commit. And how, the way Galera d deals with this is that when you commit, if this node was locked, if, if the row was locked on another node, the transaction will be aborted. So you get a transaction abort. And well, I mean, in theory, your application should deal with it and well, redo the transaction or something. But in some cases, you might not want to have transaction aborts. I mean, if, this, if you get a lot of these, you probably don't want to have, you want to do it somehow differently. And you can with MaxScale. So you can actually use the read-write sp split router with, with Galera, in which case MaxScale will arbitrarily choose one of these Galera nodes as the master, and all writes will go to this master. And then the other two machines will be, will be used for reads only. This way you, com you completely avoid the conflict problem. 
because you can, only write can to you one. Can you overlap them? So can you make uh, one node for write and then have all nodes serve this, including the third one? Uh, yes, you can, yeah. Right, so the question was whether, whether you can uh, make all nodes available for reads and not only the, the so-called slave nodes. And the answer is yes, you can have all nodes available for reads. Can you have a node like as a standby node that's not taking traffic unless all the others go down? For instance, like with Galera, we've got one node we're going to put 500 miles away. We don't want to send all the traffic there all the time, but uh, if the other nodes went down, so the question is whether you can have one node as a standby node. I mean, the answer is yes, uh, you can, because you, when you set up the router, you, you choose which servers should be included in the routing. So you can have not just not include a node in the router. The problem is that, of course, if it's part of a Galera cluster, all the writes will have to go there anyway. So it right. does, you know. But you don't want to read off of it all the time. It's right. So, yeah, so you can do that, yes. You can, you can have a node that's in the cluster, but you never use it for reading uh, at all. And these are kind of the four main use cases at the moment with the current features of, of MaxScale that you can have. So using, using the two HA solutions we support. Uh, technically, My, MaxScale can be used with MySQL cluster as well. Uh, we only support connections to the data nodes, but as, as Peter already said, not a lot of people use MySQL cluster, so I don't think there's going to be a lot of use case for that. But technically, it can be used with MySQL cluster as well. Um, so how do, you use, how do you actually start using MaxScale? So um, it's not the easiest thing to use, actually, or to set up. Well, you need to download it. Uh, you untar it. It's a tarball. You can get it from our, our website. It's a tarball. You download it. You untar it. Uh, you get a directory called MaxScale. There's a lib directory. There's a MaxScale directory. And uh, these are actually important because you have to tell MaxScale where they are, unfortunately. So it's not usability, it's not there yet, it's an alpha. So when you start MaxScale, you have to give it the home directory, MaxScale home, and the lib directory, which can be done with either variables or at the command line. So you can have a, set a MaxScale home and an LD library path. Typically, if you don't set this, you will have some errors when you start, try starting it up. Uh, after that, MaxScale is running. It's a daemon process. You don't need to interact with it. But there is an admin interface, uh, which is currently using Telnet. So perhaps not, uh, well, that's what it is at the moment. There's also an error log, message log, trace log, and debug log you can look at uh, when using MaxScale. Um, so the question was whether there's any monitoring app like MySQL is safe uh, for MaxScale, and no, no, there's nothing like that at the moment. That's probably we should have something like that once we start getting it ready for GA. That's a very good add-on. But at the moment, no. If it crashes, it it crashes, and you have to restart it. Uh, right. I mean, yeah. So the admin interface, you get, get through it to Telnet. The default port uh, is no longer 444. How old is this? Oh, 0 0.4. So this is actually quite old. But uh, the default port is now 4442. Uh, so you Telnet into, into MaxScale. Uh, you log in as admin. You, get, you have a set of commands. And these have actually been consolidated a bit for the latest version. Uh, but it's more fun if I show it to you live, which I will in a moment. So let's look at the configuration a bit, because that will give, a, uh, I guess, a better view of, of, of what you do, how you set it up. So uh, I'm going to start in the backwards order, because it makes more sense to me. So what you need to set up in your configuration file is the servers, right? So where are your MySQL servers? Uh, here in this. Example, they have five MySQL servers, right? Type server, the address to how to get to them, which port they're running on, 
protocol will be MySQL for all of them, which is the only protocol we have. So. Uh, you cannot skip the protocol, you have to set it. Uh, yeah, again, usability, it's not been number one thing when doing this. Not yet, at least. So we have five servers. You don't have to say whether they're Galera or, or uh, replication or anything like that here. We just define the servers. Uh, and later, when you do the monitors and stuff, that's when you define uh, if they're a Galera or, or replication. Uh, so that's the servers. Then you define uh, monitors if you if you need, want to monitor them, which you typically do. So you set a monitor. Uh, here it's using MySQL mon, which is uh, uh, for MySQL and replication. So it doesn't rep, uh, a monitor Galera. There's a, there's a separate monitor for Galera called Galera, Galera mon that you use. Uh, all five servers are included here, so all five servers will be monitored by this module. And you give, give it a user ID and a password. So this is a user ID and password in the server. So it can connect to the servers and, and do show variables. Are you saying that's a replication monitor? A replication live monitor or is it just the availability? It, uh, the same one uh, uh, checks both. So it checks, it checks whether the server is alive and if it's a slave. It will also check whether it's a master or a slave and the slave lag. Okay. And do, you, do I specify in a different location or what do I find? Uh, so what to do if something is, if so there's a replication? is, in some instances, uh, if it logs five seconds, I consider that replication lag. In other cases, you say, hey, it can lag after five minutes. So what, what to do in case the replication lags is not defined in the monitor, it's defined in the, uh, in the router. Oh. So the, the monitor just monitors things, and then the router is where you decide what to do. Uh, okay, so you sort of provide this fine, right? How much is lagging? Okay. Exactly. So then you have the different routers that can be configured. Here's, here's, here's one read-write split router for all servers. Uh, there is an HTTP routers, which is for testing. There's the debug interface, and uh, that's it. There's only, basically only one real router. It's a read-write split router here in this configuration file. But then you have to set up a listener as well, uh, which is the way in to connect to my max scale. So here we set up a listener, uh, which means that the clients can now connect to max scale. And when they connect to max scale uh, on port 404, uh, all the queries that come in here would, will uh, use the read-write split router to get routed to the actual servers. The So this, the question was about user, user name and password. So the one I had here is solely for the monitor. So you only need to give it uh, whatever you need to monitor. So it needs to be able to read the uh, uh, variables, the status variables. And when you connect to MaxScale, uh, uh, you, you have a username and a password. And that's what, get, goes to the, uh, that's what goes to the backend server as well, unless you do transformations with it. Through, through filters, but typically you don't. So basically, if you log in as 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 Max, you will log in as Max to the to the underlying database as well. And then what, what's used here can be something different. And this is just what the, this is what the router uses to get information and send information. So again, when you actually execute the query, it won't be using this. It will be using uh, whatever you were using when you logged in. Um, right, does this make sense? All is clear? Do you know how to use MaxCal? <laughs> All right, so it's probably time for a demo, and let's see how well this works. Fortunately, there's a network cable here which helps me a lot, I hope. So what I have here is, so I have a few servers running on, on Amazon. Can you see this, or is it too small? 
Too small? A little bit small. Let's see. Uh, appearance? No. I'll change the font to something like this. Better? Or you want it bigger? Bigger. Okay, I'll do it once more, but then after that, nothing will fit. 14. Right. So basically, what I have here is I have uh, uh, running on AWS, I have uh, three MySQL servers. Uh, let's just connect to them so you can. Uh, geez. Yes, and I have a very good root password. Uh, so it's MariaDB. Uh, it's a MariaDB server. It's a 10 0 something. 10 0 12. MariaDB 10 0 12. Uh, so one of them is a master and two are slaves running replication. So if you look at. Uh, Show slave status. This guy is running as a slave. Um, he's up to date. He's waiting for the master to send event. You, you see everything you want to see about the uh, replication. There's no active traffic going on here, so uh, you, this won't move unless I do something from here. So we have replication set up. Uh, Master server ID is one. This guy has another server ID. Which is 11. And the other, the other slave has 21. So they have different server IDs. Uh, uh, it's MariaDB 10. So there's, there's global transaction ID. You can get the status of that from that here. So they're all in the same domain, which is domain zero. Uh, you see the bin log position and, and, and where they are with the GTIDs as well. So why is it that says uh, use an APK D not Where? Oh, it's like the, in the output of the show status, the last one is the show status output. Oh, because it's not turned on. It's, use, it's, uh, it's not using it for the slaves. It's actually, this, the GTIDs are incrementing, but it's actually not using it, because I haven't put it on. Okay. Uh, but they're all, and they're all, because they're all in the same domain, so they all have the same uh, GTID domain ID. So if, if I would insert anything on the slave, it would actually use the same uh, increment. It would increment the same number. But what I wanted to show you was the uh, variables like server, the server uh, audit plugin, because that's what I'm going to use to show you traffic. So uh, I, they all have this, the MariaDB audit plugin on. Well, it's installed and it's on, because this is what I'm going to use just to show you this, what goes on on the machines, right? So there's the audit plugin. Uh, Table, all queries and all table traffic are being monitored. It goes to a file, and that's, what the, that's the file I'm going to tail in a moment. I've excluded, so, so um, the max scale monitor monitors all the servers continuously, so it sends, it sends queries to the monitor all the time. And I've excluded the monitor from the query logging, because otherwise you would, you would get that in the, in the audit file all the time. So just to give you an idea what I'm doing. Right, so that, that's the servers. Um, then we have the max scale server, which is running also on Amazon, of course. I'll change the font on this too. Can you actually see it? Yeah, you can. So 
here we have max scale running. It's on a different service. I have four, four Amazon servers. Um, max scale is already running, so I'd, I'm going to tell it into the uh, max scale server. Uh, admin and the very secret password. Now I'm into max scale. So now, first thing to see is okay, so are the servers there? I do, well, we can do a help. You get to see all the commands in max scale. So the main commands for finding out stuff, what we, what we have in here, it's the list commands and the show commands, right? So with the list, I get a list of the filters. I can list the listeners, the modules, all different things that I have in my max scale. And with show, I, I see the active things. So for example, I'm going to start by doing show servers. So I get a list of these three servers that are running. So we have, uh, and this max scale figure out, you don't set one is master, the other is a slave. Max scale looks at them and says, okay, this is a master, this is the slave. So we see the master is here, it's running. We get the node ID and you know, how many connections and, and so forth. We have a slave that's running and we have another slave that's running. So three servers, right? So all is good. Uh, then to see how I configure my max scale. So these are the servers. Let's look at the... Uh, the, the, the routers. Uh, show. Why can't I see them? Oh yeah, because it's called it's called listeners. So here we see the listeners that I have installed here. So I have a read write split uh, router which is running on port 406 and on a socket file. I have a read connection router running on port 408 and uh, uh, in a socket file. Then I have a, another read write router where I've added a filter, uh, two filters actually, and then the debug interface and the HTTP router, which I want to use. So basically if I connect now to, to port 406, I will use the read-write split router, right? And it should direct my queries according to, according to this. So that's what I'm going to do in my first, first demo. So I'm going to start by putting these up. OK, well, you won't be able to see the details, but I actually don't care. It doesn't matter that you don't see the details here. So this is basically, I'm tailing the, the uh, audit login logs here. So this up here is the master and these are the two slaves. And nothing is being added because nothing is happening on the machines, right? So it's just a tail of the three. Uh, then if I open this, well, let's open the other window. I open this window. Uh, I have a MySQL slap command here. I'm logging in as a test user. I mean, you can see, but I'm logging in as a, using a, a, a test account which has full access to everything. So I'm running MySQL slap auto generate SQL. So it will it will create queries, insert queries. It will create select queries and so forth. And this should start generating traffic on on the master. All the write queries should go to the master and the read queries to a slave. So let's see how that works. Ready? Go. Okay, we see a lot of traffic on the master. If you look closer, yeah, it's only inserts. Well, I don't know if you could see that, but it's basically all of these queries are inserts or, or updates. It looks like the slave only got read queries. Can you see this or not? Uh, the thing here is that it says read, it says query and select, so it's only read stuff that goes to the slave. Uh, I might have done a rotation actually. It stopped, it stopped producing stuff, so I think the, the log got rotate, rotated, but here we see the results. Was that proof? Do you all believe that? <laughs> so the read-write splitter works in, that, in this sense. Okay, here of course I'm doing 
very it's simple queries by MySQL slab, but but you should of course test you, you should test it with something else. I get some statistics here, but you know you don't care about these statistics. It's running on Amazon and all that stuff, but it works. So let's do something different. I also have a, a read. Uh, I have a, 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 a read connector here, so let's use that and see just single query. So user local, MySQL bin, MySQL test, uh, user bin test. And let's do some, oh yeah, what was the host? So now the read, so that was using the read write splitter. Now if I go to the read, the connection query, it's on 4008. And I'll just do some silly query like uh, select star from world.test, okay. So this query should go to one of the slaves, right? And you can see it went to this slave behind here. I don't know if you can see the actual query, but it's actually there. And if I run it again, well, it should go to one of the slaves. It went to the same slave. And now it went to the other slave. So basically, uh, the load balancer here actually uses a connection count. When you use a connection uh, load balancer, so it actually keeps track of how many connections we've had to each slave. And basically keeps them even. So you can see every, every second should approximately go to one and every second should go to the other, which is what you can see here. And this is, if you looked at the status here in this, in max scale, when it did show servers, you can see that it keeps track of the connections you've had to each machine. So you have 166 to connections to the master and you have 88 and 89 to the two slaves. So that's basically what it uses for load balancing. This is the read write splitting with statement, and this one is connection routing. Okay. So, in, in terms of uh, the statement routing, um, when you have, say, an application that isn't very nice in your database, and actually, like, it goes with a lot of connections, uh, do you minimize the number of connections on the, on the back end? Like, so, can, they, can different uh, threads, I guess, in your application share the That's not done currently, no. Uh, uh, so the question was whether, whether uh, when you have uh, an application that opens lots of connections, whether there's some kind of connection pooling inside max scale to, to not open connections. So the answer is no, there's no, at the moment, there's nothing. So it's one to one? Yeah. Okay. Right. Actually, I can show you one more example. I forgot I had the filters here as well. So. Uh, so let's log into MySQL. Uh, so I had the, f the read write spreading with filters is running on port 410. So I'll log into MySQL. Can you see this? Actually, I forgot to change this. Um, I'll make this bigger. So, okay, this window away. So now I'm logged in. I'm logged into MySQL, but I'm actually logged to max scale and not to not to MySQL server. So the client thinks it's logged into to MySQL, but it's logged into max scale, right? So if I send a query, where it goes, well, it depends on what type of query I send. So if I do show uh, 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 variables like server ID which will tell me which server I'm actually on. <coughs> I should probably change the colors to this guy. There we go. Uh, uh, 
I get a 1, 21, 21, 1. So depending on where it sends the query, I'll get different answers, right? Because I'm using the read-write uh, splitter, it will randomly put them differently here. Um, uh, what did I want to, oh yeah, so here I'm, I'm actually using a filter. We haven't seen it yet because I haven't actually, I have a regex filter running here. We haven't seen it because I haven't done a query that would uh, use it. So let's, uh, I do this select star from uh, test. Who noticed anything? That's my regex filter. <laughs> so I have a regex filter. If I misspell from, it actually, to form, it actually changes it back to from. <laughs> so for your dyslexic moments, you know, it fixes it, right? Yeah, that's useful. Yeah. So it actually, here, you can see the actual query is changed to from test here. But I actually, I have, a, I have two filters here. So I actually have another one. So if you do a create table, uh, Something like this, and I say type equals my eyes on. Will it change it to InnoDB? <laughs> no, it won't change it to InnoDB. I could do that. <laughs> but actually, type, type is no longer valid syntax starting with 5.5. Five. Uh, engine. 5 side has to be engine. And I don't have that filter running, apparently. Well, so I can't use it. I have the filter loaded, but I probably didn't. I could. I have to reload the configuration and make it running, so I can't show this and to then, you. And uh, then, to write the filter, is it, is it something in C or is it some? So if you use the, so we have three filters that are included. So we have the uh, uh, connection counting filter, statement, statement counting filter, the logging filter, and the regex filter. So if you use these three, it's not C. I can actually show it to you. I have my configuration file here. It's, yeah, it's, you can use a regex, uh, and it's very, very simple. Uh, I mean, for me, it was very simple because it's one word, but, but you can actually have a regex, you say a match, and what you would replace it with. And that's very, very easy to do. Well, now I'm lost here. Too many windows. Uh, Here, let's do a oh, this is the wrong machine. Too win too many windows. Where's my Max Gun machine? Mm. This one? Yes, this is the MaxCal machine. So here, uh, if I look at the my MaxCal configuration file, Ching. Here I have my two filters, regex filters. Type match type change to engine. Max match form change to from. So it's extremely simple to use regex filters. But in this case, wouldn't that replace from in everywhere? It will, no, form everywhere, yes. Form. So, okay. so every time you have form, it will change it to from. So you might not want to use a filter this simple normally. But this, okay. is, this is just for demonstration purposes. That would include if it was inside quotes? Uh, it just does a regex match, yes, so in, in, anywhere. Is it uh, case insensitive? It's case insensitive, yes. Yeah, I mean, you would if you really want to do this properly, you would need to you would not want to have the spaces there, and you can you can say that it has to be in a select, and I mean you can you can make a proper regex, but you know. And do you have a parser out there now? Uh, yes, we have a parser. So the question is whether we have a parser, and and we do have a, a parser, the kind of the MySQL parser. So, so what I mean in this case is, uh, can I can rewrite say, hey, I want to change table. Test 
um, you, I mean, you, you can do it, but not with, you probably want, you want to, if you want to do something like this, you probably want to have a more complex filter, which we don't have yet. You would, you would have to wait until, either write C or wait until we produce it. So we only have these three at the moment. So, you know, you probably don't want to use a regex filter for that, but you can do it, yes. Uh, no. So the question was whether you want to change the configuration. Can, do you have to restart max scale? The answer is no. Uh, you can dynamically, uh, if you look at help, there's a, there's a command for reload configuration. You change the configuration file and then you do uh, reload config. And it dynamically reloads the configuration file. Is there a syntax uh, whether there's a syntax syntax uh, check, no. So MaxScale actually, if you have a syntax error in your configuration file, MaxScale just ignores it. So so it doesn't. Uh, I used to work with MySQL cluster in the early days. You had a syntax error, your cluster wouldn't run. I mean, the, it wouldn't start up. And here it just ignores it. The syntax error just ignores it. So it's a lot better. Does it log it at least as an error or no? It, the error log, yeah. Uh, I think I'm running out of time, so I'm going to switch back to my slides and say that it's time for questions, but we don't have time for them. Right, so I just wanted to show you this slide. So if you want to get involved, MaxScale is on GitHub. You can download it from our website. Uh, there's the source code. Uh, you can report bugs. Um, I just reported one this morning. <laughs> and there's a Google group, and that's about it. All right, now we have time for questions, if you still have any more questions. Um, can you run multiple max scale instances? Is there any notion that, I mean, probably not right now, but are you guys thinking about saying, uh, for HA, can I have two different Maybe that doesn't make sense. Yeah, so the question was whether you can run multiple max scales. And, and, and there's two answers. Uh, one is you can already do it, but there's no communication between them. And we're definitely looking at, looking at doing that. That's what you would like to have, is you want to have a communication between the max scales. So there's a state, you can have state transfers between the max scales. That's, and that's what there isn't yet. But you could have two max scales, and it would work. But there wouldn't be any, you know, if you have some state, something going on in one max scale, it wouldn't show in the other. But we're definitely looking at that, yes. Any other questions? Well, so one is the uh, filters, and then the, so the intelligence in in uh, in the routing. I mean, MaxScale is specifically built for MySQL, right? But there might be some others out there that are as well. But yeah, that's that's one thing. We're specifically built for MySQL, so so the monitors are built for MySQL application. Galera, we do the check that it's actually synced and and stuff. We have the authentication, which perhaps is not so useful yet. But as we add features about that, so we have the, you know, we're using the MySQL parser, which with filtering, that would be very useful when we start, when we expand the filtering more. Uh, because we, do, we can actually parse the queries, so you can actually use that when you filter the stuff. So for example, I mean, here we use the regex, but for example, uh, Peter had, a, had an example about changing table names or something like that. So you can actually say, okay, I want the thing that's been parsed as tables, and I want to do something with that, and, you know, and that you can use. So it will be a much more intelligent router than most. And it, it is already. Uh, I mean, we use, we use HAProxy a lot, for example. And HAProxy with Galera, you have to patch it because it doesn't check that they're actually synced to nodes. So that already is a very small thing uh, uh, like that. So uh, this is pretty awesome. Uh, a lot of people have needed something like this for a long time. Um, what was your primary uh, objective when you started out? Like, what was the one thing that we need something new? I mean, it's, so why did we start doing this? I mean, it was customer needs, yes. We had so many, multiple customers kind of having very similar needs. So we started building it and, you know, we started going one direction, we changed a bit. So it's, you know, uh, it's taken longer than we wanted. We thought we would have more features done than we wanted and all that stuff, but customer needs is, is basically where it came from. Was it like one, one demand that was on top of the site? 
number one was the trans transparent handle, handling of, of, of failures and, and, and things like that. So you have a replication here. You don't want to have your you don't, you don't want to have your applications replication aware or you know if you do take things out of the cluster and things like that. I mean, and especially when, with Galera and with other features, every time we talked about it, they were like, so, "And what about the customers?" Be okay, great. And how do you load balance? Well, well, you put the VIP in place. You do something else, and there was, so there was there was clearly a need for this. I guess we're done. Well, if you're interested in, in, in knowing more about this or, or becoming beta testers, uh, uh, we have a booth. You can ask me or Craig or anyone else about it. Thank you. Your customers rely on your website or application. If it's slow or non-responsive, it infuriates your users and costs you money. Keeping your business critical systems humming along requires insight into what they're doing. Your system metrics tell stories, stories that can reveal performance bottlenecks, resource limitations, and other problems. But how do you keep an eye on all of your system's performance metrics in real time and record this data for later analysis? Enter Longview, the new way to see what's really going on under the hood. The Longview dashboard lets you visualize the status of all your systems, providing you with a bird's eye view of your entire fleet. You can sort by CPU, memory, swap, processes load, and network usage. Click a specific system to access its individual dashboard, then click and drag to zoom in on choke points and get more detail. Comprehensive network data, including inbound and outbound traffic, is available on the Network tab, and Disk Writes and Free Space on the Disks tab, while the Process Explorer displays usage statistics for individual processes. The System Info tab shows listening services, active connections, and available updates. Adding Longview to a system is easy. Just click the button, copy the one-line installation command, then run the command on your Linux system to complete the process. The agent will begin collecting data and sending it to Longview. Then the graphs start rolling. Use Longview to gain visibility into your servers, so when your website or app heats up, it stays up.